Here with Rabbi of Remy Zippel, talking about just the ongoing conflict in Israel and unfortunate news to share with a lot of Utahns today, uh, learning about the death of one of our own here in the state. Uh, Rabbi, kind enough to join us to talk a little bit more about the lives behind a lot of the photos that we see, but specifically one here that Utahns can become connected to. Thanks for being here, and well, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me, Brian, and I, I appreciate it. I'm here today to talk a little bit about my friend Lotan Nabir. Uh, this is a photo that was taken back in March um, at Public on, I think it's 900 South, uh, down, the, down the street from Smith's Ballpark. Lotan was a member of our community, had been for the better part of a year. Uh, we had been notified Saturday night that he had gone missing following a rave in southern Israel, and this morning his family confirmed his death. He'll be laid to rest tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., um, in the Holy Land, together with dozens, hundreds of other families that are laying their loved ones to rest. And you were telling me there were a number of Utahns that were at that rave over the weekend. There were. Uh, Lotan was down there with two friends that together they had been in Israel for a wedding several weeks ago, and they were hanging out there with the family for a little while longer, and some of his friends had managed to get away, and he hadn't. And I remember on, on Saturday night when I was first notified that he was reported missing, you, you think to yourself, he was at a rave. Uh, Lotan was 24, he was a DJ, loved music, loved life. Um, and uh, there are people that I know that go to raves, if not every day, then every weekend. And, and, and going to a rave is not the sort of thing that I think any human being should have to worry about their safety. When a parent hears that their young child, their young adult child is going to a rave, uh, we don't expect to live in a world where a parent immediately thinks to themselves, oh my God, are they going to be okay? And, and those are the sorts of, sorts of folks that are dying in Israel right now. Those are the sor sorts of innocent souls that are being massacred. Young, fun-loving, innocent people who wanted to party and dance with their friends all night without a care in the world, without a malicious intent towards another human being, those are the sorts of casualties that our community and our people are experiencing. And I think it puts a really powerful and human face on this issue. I I'm hearing a lot in, in the media and from folks here in town about you know, the political conflict that's going on right now in Israel. Political conflict almost has the connotation that the folks that are being killed are, are high-level cabinet members and, and parliamentarians and folks that are involved in creating policy in Israel. These are young people at a rave. Uh, in addition to the rave that was attacked, there was a nature festival. There was about 200 young people who were sleeping outdoors in nature. I mean, can, can you get more innocent than that? Can you get more innocent than wanting to sleep under the moon and experience God's good earth at a nature festival? And those are the sorts of innocent men, women, and children that are being massacred in the Holy Land. Those are the sorts of people that my community is mourning and will continue to mourn in the weeks ahead. And as Israel gains control of those territories, those numbers will continue to rise and we will continue to mourn. Please hold up that photo right here for this camera because nice and high there. This is, this is who we're talking about. This is a member of our community here in Utah. You mentioned that Lotan has lived here for about a year, year and a half or so. How will you remember him? Oh, well, I remember Lotan much like this photo represents. I mean, he's holding up a noisemaker. Uh, traditionally on, on Purim, on the, on the holiday that we were celebrating on this day in, in question, uh, whenever the evil Haman's name is mentioned, it's, it's booed out, as it were, uh, in the synagogue or in the coffee shop in this instance. And I remember Lotan as someone who was ever trying to smile and blot out evil. And I think in his memory, that is something that we can all relate to and connect to that desire to always be cheerful and always vanquish evil from our midst. Over the last few days, uh, so much news coming out from both sides of this, this very horrifying conflict. But what are you hearing from people here in Utah, maybe not even members of your faith? What are they saying to you? What are they, what are they reaching out to, to say to you and members of your community? You know, in, in full transparency, there, there have been so many kind gestures. And I'll say that, you know, uh, just as I was leaving to come over here, a young woman came over to the synagogue with a number of handwritten cards from her family, which I thought was a beautiful gesture. But it's remarkable that I'm hearing from people who, you know, there's a lot of folks who have shared on their social media. And I'm hearing from other people, you know, I, I'd love to share something on my social media, Jew and non-Jew alike, but I'm scared of blowback from my employer. You know, the DEI office at our, at our corporate headquarters has reservations about my sharing about Jews that are being massacred in Israel. And all I think to myself is about September 12th, 2001, if we would all had social media back in the day, and if I would have wanted to fly an American flag from my home, I was a kid on 9-11, but if I would have had a, a home and a flag to fly, would I have been concerned about blow black, blowback from, from various corporate entities? And, and that's what I'm hearing from folks in town, is you know, we, we want to we share our condolences with you. you know, we're, not, we're not calling for revenge, and we're not calling for military strikes. We're mourning the loss of hundreds, hundreds of human beings 
And, and we can't do that out of fear of reprisal. We'll, we might lose our jobs, who knows, we might be canceled. Uh, you know, the Jazz put out a, put out a little image yesterday. Um, you know, the Utah Jazz as an organization stand with the hundreds of innocent lives lost in Israel. And you go through those comments, you know, 2,000 comments at last count. Free Palestine, death to the Jews, you know, too bad Hitler is not around. Uh, that's, what, that's what we're dealing with at the moment. And, and that's the very real concern for a number of us. I'm just processing it as you say those things, because obviously I'm on social media too, and I see those comments in response to something like this. But aside from the comments, your role of leadership to the community and your congregation, how have you a been able to? I mean, how have you been able to process any of this as the news comes in? And just over the last week or so, I mean, this is so much devastation. I, th I think at, at its core, the most important thing that that the members of my community, Jews that I'm interfacing with, remember at this time is no one's looking for, for, for something inspiring to say. There's a lot of tears to be shed at this point more than anything. I think a lot of us need a shoulder to cry on and, and want to be a shoulder to be cried on. And I, I think when we think about the response from within the community and outside the community, you cannot overstate the human element of this experience. Uh, you know, as, and, and I've said this this week, as, as Jews, we're no secret to pain and suffering. You know, we, we've lost brothers and sisters through the ages never at this quantity and never in this fashion. And this morning there were, there were reports that finally circulated of 40 babies that were beheaded in an Israeli kibbutz. And, and, and there's, you know, no one's got any insight. You know, what, do, what do you say to someone who sees those pictures? How do you rationalize that? You cry, you, you be there in it with those that are mourning. And, and I think in, in a call to the wider community, all we can ask for is just, just stand with us, just understand and process what we're going through at the moment. We'll be gathering on the Capitol steps tomorrow night at 5 p.m. And all we can really ask for is, is, is other humans to join us in the human experience. I was gonna ask you about that event because obviously I think people wanna find a way to, well, how can I, how can I cope with what I've been seeing? How can I relate? How can I come together? That seems like a great meeting place for people to come together of all faiths to just not only support what's, what, what you're feeling, but also grieve a little bit. Right I would now. agree, it's, 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 you know, it, we're, we're extremely intentional as to the peaceful nature of the rally. We're excited to have the governor in attendance who confirmed his participation just a short few minutes ago. And it'll be a human experience. If you're a human being that has been bothered or touched by the images that you're seeing online or the reports that you're seeing online, and you want a moment to stand with other human beings in conflict, I think it's a tremendous opportunity. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you, Brian.